Welcome to section 2.8a. So general people, I'm going to break this section up into two parts to make it more easily digestible. So general people, in this section, we're going to be talking about symbolic representation. So just to remind you guys, we have these atoms. And now what I want to do is go ahead and represent some characteristics about them. So what you guys have seen in high school is that you guys have a periodic table. So if we have an element, what we can do is abbreviate the element using a one, two, or three letter abbreviation. Now, some of these abbreviations are gonna follow the English name. So for example, titanium is abbreviated as TI. Some of the elements are abbreviated based on their Latin name. For example, iron is not IR, iron is FE for ferrum. And then some of them, you guys will notice, have not been named. Usually those are the three letter ones at the bottom of the periodic table. The reason they haven't been named is because they're synthetic elements. And again, on the bottom of the periodic table, you can see elements like berkelium, californium, and americanium. Now these elements were synthesized in the good old United States, close to us at the nuclear facility near Berkeley, so if you make an element, chances are you get to name that element. Now, once we have the abbreviation for the element, we can add a couple more things to it. Now, what we can do is on the bottom left-hand side, we can put a number, and this is called the atomic number. This is going to be the number of protons. Now, what I want you guys to note is the number of protons are going to define the element. So what you'll always see is that if you have 22 on the bottom here, it is always going to be abbreviated as TI because 22 protons means titanium. Now the element on the top, this is one that can vary. This is called the mass number. The mass number is going to be the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So this is a very formal way of writing the elemental symbol. Most of the time, what you guys will see is you guys will see this symbol right here, and they often emit the atomic number from the bottom because again, these are locked into place. Uh, if I were to say this, I would say that this is titanium 48. If there's a number after an element's name, it's referring to its mass number. Now on the periodic table, you guys see cards like this. So usually what will happen is they will name the element on the bottom. They'll put the elemental symbol in the middle. On the top left-hand side, they usually put the atomic number. And what they will do on the right-hand side is they usually have something that's the atomic weight. Now this is usually a decimal number and we'll talk about atomic weight. It has to do with the mass number and the number of isotopes we have. The last thing is there is sometimes usually extra information like electronic configuration or states or crystal structure that the element adopts, uh, but that depends on how in depth your periodic table is going to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and present you a real quick question. How many protons, electrons, and neutrons are in the aluminum atom, specifically aluminum 27? So go ahead and write this on a piece of scratch paper, mark the right answer on your quiz, and we'll go ahead and discuss this. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and look up aluminum on the periodic table. I put its symbol right here. What we can do is write aluminum very formally. And that means we have aluminum, 27 up at top for my mass number, and 13 on bottom for my atomic number. Now these are all gonna tell me some things. So the first thing that I told you guys is that atomic number on the bottom is going to tell you the number of protons. So 13 means that there are 13 protons. Now, I told you this was atomic aluminum. Whenever I say atom, that means it's a neutral species. So if it's neutral, I have to balance out the charges. So remember, protons are positive. And so if I wanna balance out 13 positives, I need 13 negative charges. And remember, electrons are negatively charged. So 13 protons, 13 electrons. And the last thing I wanna do 
is count the number of neutrons. And to do that, I'm going to look at the mass number. The mass number is 27. And remember that 27 equals the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. And so what I can say is that 27 equals the number of protons, which I just figured out was 13, and that's going to equal the number of neutrons. If I go ahead and rearrange this, the number of neutrons equals 27 minus 13, or 14 neutrons. So let's go ahead and jump into another quiz question. Gentle people, tell me how an ion is typically formed. All right, gentle people, the way that you're going to make ions is you're going to gain or lose electrons. So let's go ahead and talk about ions and why this is the case. So first we need to know what an ion is. An ion is a charged particle. And so what this means is that if I look at my neutral atom, the number of protons equals the number of electrons. And so if I want a charged particle, what I have to do is make an unequal amount of protons and electrons. Now it is far easier to change the number of electrons. If I change the number of electrons, what I'm doing is I'm keeping the atom the same because remember the proton defines the atom. Now you could have said, oh, I can change the number of protons, but then if you do that, you change what the atom is fundamentally, and this is not a typical way to do things. Cracking an atom takes a tremendous amount of energy. So for Chem 1A, what we're going to do to form ions is lose or gain electrons. Now if I lose or gain electrons, I can form two different types of ions. One is called a cation, not a cation. A cation is something with a positive charge. And so if I look at protons and electrons, and if they're equal, they're neutral. If I want a positive charge, well, I need to have more positive things than negative things. Or in other words, I need to have more protons than electrons. And the only way that's going to occur is if I lose electrons. So in this case, you can see the example of the sodium atom. What you guys will see here is I have 11 protons and you can count the electrons around this atom and what you'll see is I have 11 electrons in these white spheres. So what I can do is if I go ahead and lose an electron, so I, so I take one of these electrons out, what I'll have is 11 protons and 10 electrons. And so that's going to make the sodium plus ion. Now, the other type of ion that I can form is something called an anion. And an anion is something with a negative charge. So in this case, I need more negative things in my atom than positive things. So in this case, I'm gonna have more electrons. So in this case, I need my atom to gain electrons. So again, here's my chlorine atom, 17 protons. You can count the number of electrons. There should be 17 of them around here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take an electron and stick it onto that atom. So it gains an electron. If this occurs, I'll get my 17 protons, and now I'll have 18 electrons. 18 electrons is more than that 17, and so I form this anion. So ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and do this next quiz. If I have this particular gold ion, how many electrons are present here? All right, ladies and gentlemen, again, we're going to go to our periodic table. And to make life easier, let's go ahead and write gold out formally. So if I look on the periodic table, gold is element 79. And so remember, this is the neutral gold. So neutral gold, that means gold without a charge, has 79 protons and 79 electrons. Now, what I want to do is I want to get a positive three charge on there, meaning I want more positives than negatives. And remember, I can only change the number of electrons. So what I want to do is I want to decrease the number of electrons because I want more positive. And I want to go ahead and decrease it by three. So 79 protons, if I subtract three electrons, I'll have 76 electrons. 
And if I go ahead and add the charges up, so 79 positives plus 76 negatives, I will end up with an overall three plus charge. There are three more positives than negatives in this configuration. So the answer here is 76 electrons. Now this might be a little counterintuitive. I took away something and it became positive. But remember, electrons are negatively charged. So in essence, what you can think about is you can think of electrons as debt. If I take away debt, your bank account will be more positive. So just keep in mind what the charges are when you work through these types of problems. I hope that made sense. And remember to stay safe, Chem1A.